Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva on day two, of course. And one of the speakers is with me now. It's Maurizio Viccioni, who's Executive Vice President of the Global Good Fund. So you just come from giving a speech. How did it go? Well, I think it went well. Uh, you know, it was in a controversial topic, which is uh, the sort of the role of data, including all of the implication around privacy and uh, data curation in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And I think that may be the next frontier. Now that the algorithms are shaping up, uh, the real next innovation is gonna come from data. So, um, so that was an interesting topic. I think our audience needs to know what the Global Good Fund is. Sure, um, it's uh, a sister organization to the uh, Gates Foundation. Um, and uh, so we're using philanthropic funding from uh, Mr. Gates and, and his charitable trust to really drive science and technology in areas that uh, uh, are too high risk for traditional players to do, uh, but hopefully have high potential for impact and return. And of course we're doing this for philanthropic purposes, so it's for uh, greater good, uh, public good. I think what solutions in particular for the emerging markets of the developing world, I guess is the less politically correct yeah, word. Yeah, correct. Our focus is low and middle income countries. Uh, basically, it's the bottom billion people. Um, and when you actually do the math, it's more like the bottom four billion people. And if you think about it, that's the uh, majority of the people on the planet. And most of them have been passed by by all the innovation in science and technology that we take for granted in the first world. So part of Global Goods' goal is to use the power of invention to really sort of rectify that and to try to find catalytic innovations that can change healthcare, can change agricultural productivity for the better. And, and machine learning and artificial intelligence takes a particular uh, strong role there. Give me a case study. Sure. Well, for example, um, we were behind the breakthrough in cervical cancer care, which is the second leading cause of mortality in women, primarily 85% of that burden in low resources, because women in the first world get screened. Um, in the developing world, they very rarely get screened. So there are millions of women that will die because of lack of screening. And the breakthrough we had was in collaboration with the National Cancer Institute in the US of essentially having a piece of software using machine learning on a camera phone that allows you to screen for cervical cancer better than the most advanced laboratory techniques that exist today. So it's actually better than the pap smear or other cytology-based tests that would be the standard of care in Switzerland or in, in the States. And a, a simple camera phone with artificial intelligence outperforms that. And that's a case study of a piece of innovation which is now scaling globally uh, in partnership with the WHO and uh, Unitaid and uh, chai uh, as a new sort of standard of care. That's an example of a catalytic invention. But that's positive, so what's your negative concerns that you raised? I don't actually have a lot of negative concerns, but anytime you're talking about privacy and data and essentially collecting and aggregating large data sets, there are those that will worry about how is the data collected, the ethics, um, the privacy issues, should governments own this data or is it really the patient's data? And of course, you don't get a lot of this conversation in low and middle income countries. So it tends to be a concern primarily in the first world. But there are clearly ethical considerations to the idea that as uh, data sets become more powerful and the discovery in areas like medicine, including the companies of tomorrow, are predicated on the availability of that data, then should the people who own the data benefit somehow. And that's an interesting exploration here at the ITU today. So I know you, you can't stay for the whole event, but what would you like its conclusions to be at the end from what you're on Well, your I think area? there's some obvious conclusions that the early uh, successes in, in AI for good are starting to show in medicine specifically. And those clearly are indicating the power of collaborative ecosystems. It is not possible for one company, one organization to essentially own both the data, the data curation, the clinical 
information and the clinical solutions. So I think the, the spirit of the meeting, as well as the direction that I think we're all driving, is one of collaboration and the role of the UN system to be sort of a broker of those collaboration. I think there is some really encouraging early signs, uh, whether it be at ITU, at WHO, uh, at uh, uh, UN, you know, uh, within the SDG complex, to really sort of drive consortia and collaboration abilities that can federate companies, can federate academic researchers, can, can uh, federate uh, clinical researchers uh, for this sort of greater good. And I think the conference is particularly uh, timely and well positioned to act as a catalyst for that. Okay, well that was Maurizio Viccioni who's uh, from the Global Good Fund. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.